most quilters probably have made a scrappy quilt or two and have their favorite pattern. My new favorite is the potato chip block. It's a great scrap buster. But did you know it can be even better? Oh my goodness, I am going to show you the best scrappy strip technique for amazing potato chip blocks. This quilt is gorgeous. Can you see it behind me? Look at all that going on. You are going to be amazed. This isn't just a scrap buster. We are going in for all the pieces, not just the ones big enough for a block. Wait till you see what I'm going to show you what we're doing. I think you'll have fun. Let's get started. Here's a quick picture of the quilt. This is how it, it finished. It's a nine patch and these blocks each measure approximately 20 inches. They have a seven and a half inch center. And what I want to show you, what I'm really excited about, is the potato chip block has traditionally these rectangular pieces around it. But you can also supplement that with pieces that are pieced together. They're with rectangles that are pieces of different scraps and, and you can see all the, the smaller strips of fabric and that's what I want to show you. And it just adds so much interest throughout the quilt. There's still a place for the regular blocks, but mixing in these others just changes up the dynamics so much. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's great fun. You may remember this fabric a while back. I showed you I received a, I was gifted a bunch of uh, leftover fabrics from a quilter who wasn't quilting anymore. And it was kind of went through a few people and it, it came to me and I thought, oh, this is so exciting. And I love how bright and bold these fabrics are but they can be kind of a challenge to use so these are the quilt cuts so this quilter um bless her heart went through and she had all this together she had a plan these are all eight inch pieces and i started going through and you know there are some strips or strip pieces like this but then there's also some solids in various colors and I was just trying to get some ideas of what I wanted to do with this. So let me show you what I have in mind. I have a wonderful quilt to show you, but I need to show you my newest fabric. And it's always fun to check it out and see what's inside. This is my Batik Fat Quarter Bundle that I get. I'm in the club with the Fat Quarter Shop and they are fabulous. So I get 12 fabrics every month, all in a uh, coordinated color series. This is my um, my June, right? I think this, what month is it? It is June. <laughs> this was May's, that's right, because I get May's at the end of the month. Um, but look at this. So we start with these pretty little pinks, and then we move into some lavenders and purple and get real pinky, and look at these colors. Oh my goodness. You know, I want to show you... Given the quilt that we're going to make, if you like to have strips on hand, let me show you a quick way to cut your fat quarters that will give you a wonderful opportunity for pre-cut fabrics on your shelf in sizes that you use the most. So let me go ahead and let's see. I want to put this side here line my salvages up and you know if you've watched me cut my fat quarters it can be a number of different ways and it depends on the fabric i have what i'm going to use it for how i'm going to use it etc now ordinarily i should press this but this comes really well packaged and other than these creases across the the, uh, the fold I don't really have to worry too much about it. So let me show you what we're going to do here. We'll line this up. So I put however many layers, and it depends on the size rotary blade you have. Um, I'm using the 45 millimeter. If you go with the 60, this you can go through easily a dozen layers. And so if I had the time to go through all that fabric and line it up, then we would be in great shape. Let's see, I'm going to put my ruler right here so I can cut off that selvage. Oops. 
Now, what I do is I use fat quarters for my pre-cuts. I love charm squares and I like strips of varying widths. Um, I don't generally go wider than maybe four inches, but I definitely like to have strips available because there's so much you can do. Now, the first thing I do is I will cut a five inch square. Okay, you can see better here. So I'm going to line this up on five inches and I'm going to cut a strip so I can cut my five inch squares. So I'm going to cut one strip. But while I'm here, I'm also going to do a second strip. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either do another five inch or you can do a 10 inch. Because of what I've been working with, I don't see myself doing a layer cake project right now. So I am going to set this to five inches. This piece, I'm going to set aside just like that. When I need some fabric, either five inches or two and a half inches, I will come and I will just cut this into a strip or cut it into five inch squares if I need more. So strip one gets set aside. Then we do the second strip of five inches and cut that across. And you see that I'm cutting across the widest point. That's because I will get my five inches. There we go. Whoops. I'm gonna cut off just a little bit more on that one. Um, I'm going to cut off my five inches for charm squares and then I will have those ready. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And they'll be handy and this group of fabric will be tucked together. So when I need to uh, make something with this color, I'll have a couple options to choose from. I can mix it up. A lot of you like the way that I use a lot of different fabrics to create a single color in a quilt. And this is how I do it. Um, just by, you know, incorporating all these together. And so I'll go here. Now, this little piece can be used um, as long as it's an inch or more. I prefer at least one and a half inches, but I hang on to that too. So I have my five inch strip and I have my five inch squares. Now, the other thing at this point is there's one of two things that I'll do. I will either take this as it is and fold it up like this and put it in my basket. Alternatively, I will, because we've got what, nine inches here. We cut across the 20, so we have the 18. And that's one thing nice about the fat quarter shop. Your fat quarters are 19 inches. So if anything is skewed, you don't have to worry about losing corners or losing fabric or not having enough for your, your 18 inch piece that you need. But a lot of times I will come in and do the extra five inch width. And that's the part that I want to show you. If I do that five inch, I'm not going to actually cut it, but I am going to show you. Look at how much you have left. You have this wonderful strip. And in this case, it measures about three and three quarter inches. This you can use for so many different things, for different scrappy projects, for strip sets, for... Um, any kind of a project where you need lots of fabrics and you can either cut, you know, narrow pieces like this, you can cut strips, you can cut a two and a half inch and still have, you know, an inch plus left over. So this is a great way to manage your fat quarters. The biggest thing is if my fat quarters are not cut, I won't use them. If they sit in the package and they're in this pretty little bag and I can take it out and look at it and go, oh, aren't they beautiful? Well, it's not going to get done. So for me, this works out really, really well. And that's what I wanted to show you for this quilt, particularly the potato chip block. That strip up here, oh my gosh, you can do so much with that and get a huge variety of fabrics. So that's where I am. I just wanted to share that with you and show you how I work with my fabrics to have as many on hand as possible. Now, let's move on and take a look at the quilt. 
I want to show you this block before I get it finished. Because you see, we have the large center square, the first round, one on each side, a pair top and bottom. And then we put our pair on the outside and then three across the top and bottom. That's it for the block. There's 16 rectangles and a center square. Now, I was working with eight inch squares that I had uh, an abundance of, and I wanted to use that to make this quilt. So I did the math and figured out what is the largest rectangle I can get out of an eight inch square. And it was a four by seven and a half. And that worked out great because I take my square and let me show you right here. I've got a few of them. And here it is right here. So what I would do is take a half inch on one side. There's my seven and a half because this is eight inches. Remember, take a half inch off. Now it's eight or excuse me, it's eight by seven and a half. And then I cut it into two four inch sections. So I've got four inch by seven and a half. So it worked perfectly. So if you have a lot of blocks that are left over from other things and you can at least get this dimension, this width, in my case, it's four inches, then go ahead and piece them together into smaller sections. You see how these are, they're all the four inches wide, but I had small pieces. So I just joined them and put them together to create my seven and a half. But you don't even have to do that. You can make a long strip the entire width with a bunch of small pieces. And I just think that creates such a wonderful look. So think of the potato chip block as your basic layout. And you know you need a strip to be this long and a strip to be this long. You need these, you need these. And just start creating square, I say squares, but it's actually a rectangle that you need that's going to work and make it fit and use everything you have. Because obviously, as you can tell, the more the merrier. And even little narrow pieces find their way in. You know, like we've got this little palm tree down here. And it looks perfect between the, the little chameleon and the, uh, and the birds. It just, I just think it's wonderful. And a lot of the colors carry through. So when I was cutting these blocks out, I hadn't quite decided what to do for the center. And most of the blocks that I had weren't really something to put in the center, like with a picture or a particular um, design that you could use as a focal center. And so I went digging through once I had all these and I realized I still needed a little more fabric. And so I decided I wanted to go with kind of a, a complementary color that would sort of tone down. I didn't want to bring in more gold and yellow and purple because there was a lot of that in here. I found this and look at it has the gold yellow. It has the purple. It has bright reds and pinks and super dark blues. And so I thought, okay, blue's my go-to and the green coral. So the fabrics that I brought in the extra ones were these greens. Now, this actually came with the, the fabric bag that I received, but it works beautifully. And this has the the green and blue and gold and purple. And this is sort of a, you know, a blend of a couple colors. And I just think it all came out fabulously well. These colors look great. And, you know, when you go scrappy, you don't have to do the color thing. I prefer it just because it allows me a little more control in what the finished quilt looks like. And I appreciate being able to do that because then I can use the colors that I want in the quilt and not just rely on what the scraps are. So I bring in um, either extra of a particular color or not so much of one that I think might be too much of a contrast or too much of a distraction. So look at this. I love it. And you see all these little pieces in here. And that's a great way to put these strips together. Orphan. So orphan blocks. Think about what you can cut up and, and get into uh, these particular blocks. If you tend to work in a particular size 
um, when you make your quilts or when you make your, what do I want to say, your blocks, your scraps, your strip sets, things like that, kind of think about the, uh, the opportunities that you may have tucked away somewhere on a shelf. But look, we've got a big piece and then one, two, three pieces. Again, one, two, three. Um, I don't intentionally go with three, but it just sort of worked out that way. This one is just a pair of them and then the three. But that's what I really wanted to focus on. Now, look at this. This fabric I've had for absolute years and years and years. And finally, I'm, I'm getting rid of this. I used the last of it. And all I could do was get eight of these squares. But I needed nine because I wanted to do a nine patch. Well, look at what I did. I was lucky enough to get fabric that sort of I could put together, match up, and sew a seam there. And look, you, there's the seam. Other than this little fish having a bit of a uh, Frankenstein forehead there, this came out really well. Unless you knew to look at it, you, you wouldn't even realize that that's pieced. So that's it. That makes this so simple. But also what I want to show you, let me just kind of move this aside here and I'll finish that up, is this is, this is where I started. You'll get a kick out of this one. This is when I took some of the pieces when I was doing a sample to figure out what size would work. These were colors that I knew I wouldn't use in it. I wanted to really stay with this. You know, I think um, Cinco de Mayo, I think Southwest uh, Fiestas, and I, I love this look. And so I used that, and then this one was, all, this is a four, but that was only three and a half, and I couldn't use it. So I'll just tuck that away to use for something else. But this is what the blocks look like. And so I would line this up, and this is eight inches, and I want to cut it down to seven and a half. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. You know, I always count because it's so easy to make a mistake. And a lot of the fabric still, still had some salvages, so I had to watch out for that. And now that I have my my seven and a half this way, I just need to cut this on the four inch. And then I have two blocks, whoop, let me line that up, two blocks to use for my quilt. And look, they're all pieced, they're ready to go. This is such an easy way to make a scrappy quilt. I love it. And it turned out beautiful. I can't wait to show you. Um, let me pull in some of the finished blocks and show you what they look like. Just look at these colors. Aren't they spectacular? I can't wait to see this quilt put together. It's, it's going to be quite a sight. And I just, you know, kind of want to point out again where some of the pieced areas are. And I put most of the pieces, the ones that are pieced on the outer side, so that when I come in with another next to it, I don't have to worry about the same colors being next to each other. And by having them pieced, that mixes up the colors a lot. And that just kind of worked out for me. And look at this. Oh my, and we've got a little chili pepper. And, you know, the, this is not probably a fabric that I would have chosen because it's, you know, pretty much a calico. But the colors work. And tucked there in the corner, I think it looks wonderful. Here's one that I didn't have enough fabric. And I actually, this was two, um, this was a jelly roll. So two, two and a half inch strips, and I just sewed them together down the middle and made my four inch that way. So that worked out perfect. And let's see, what else? Just trying to think of things that I did along the way that might be helpful. And we've got fish and birds and all kinds of turtles even. So this, is, this has been a lot of fun. There's some great fabrics in here. And look at those birds. Aren't they just wonderful? Now, I don't know where a lot of this fabric came from because this was gifted to me. But I did see on some of the salvages, they said Hobby Lobby. So if you have a Hobby Lobby, um, we do in town. It's I don't get there very often, but they, uh, they do have some fun fabrics from what I can see here. And, you know, squeeze some palm trees in and we got a flamingo. Oh, my goodness. Look at all that. So there you are. Now I'm going to put this together. And even if they're not perfectly straight, it 
doesn't stand out a lot. This is really kind of wonky, and you can see more here where that leans, but once you cut your rectangle square, whatever's going on in the middle doesn't really matter. But look at these little guys. Aren't they cute? And look at just things that randomly happen. The fins of the fish right here go right down into that leaf, and it just sort of looks like a, a leaf coming down from the upper block. Stuff like that makes me excited to see <laughs> how blocks work together. All right, there we are. And so that's it. I'm going to put this together and show you the finished quilt. I think you're going to love it. Just look at all these colors. It is spectacular. Oh my goodness, I love this quilt. And I love the idea of putting the pieces together like that and joining them end to end and, and see where you find them mixed in everywhere and just sort of spread about. Now we've got these wonderful birds. Are they just not terrific? Oh my goodness, they just make you smile sitting there watching over everything. But look at how these blocks just blend together with so much different pattern going on and color. And we see the regular size, the, the potato chip block, the rectangles that we expect. But then to find these other pieces, and look at these little pink dots spread out everywhere. Oh my goodness, this works awesome. I love the way this came together. You know, I look at this and I can't help but thinking what a great jigsaw puzzle this would be. It would probably drive me crazy, but it would be great fun to try and find it piece by piece. I sure hope you enjoyed this. This was really great fun and, you know, a great exercise in how to use your, your, your stash, your scrap pieces, and how to put them together into something a little bit larger and use them in place of something else. I, I like being able to substitute a, a simple rectangle like this right here with a series of pieces that are stripped together. It just looks beautiful. So there we are, another fantastic potato chip block, and I'm really excited about it. And I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed this. It's been great fun, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. It's always a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed and are excited about getting started on a new quilt yourself. Thanks again, and have a wonderful rest of your day.